Thank you. The people behind Montreal's urban beehive business, Alveol, are about to apply the disruptor model to urban chicken keeping. Having an urban chicken coop is not, strictly speaking, legal in Montreal, but depending on where you live in the city, it is more or less tolerated. So the door is open a crack, and Alveol's new POC chicken keeping service intends to wedge it open. Now, if you're wondering why POC, that's because <laughs> POC is uh, the French version of what a chicken says. To tell us more, Alex McLean, co-founder of LVL and POC is live in the Daybreak Studio. Morning, Alex. Good morning. Uh, so uh, POC uh, stands for what? Um, production, observation, and connection. So why did you want to start this this part of the venture? Um, we, when we started the bees, uh, uh, there was a lot of talk about uh, urban chicken coops, and it never really picked up. And so we, we were hoping another company or project would start up, and, and it kind of died uh, died away. So we decided to, to uh, as you said, apply the disruptor, uh, disruptor model uh, and, and start uh, moving a little bit with this project so that we can start pushing forward urban chicken coops. So, so you uh, are, um, I guess, inspired by by other famous disruptors, things like, for instance, Uber, the car service? There's a lot of different uh, companies out sure. there, different projects, uh, mostly movements. I mean, w w we're talking about urban agriculture here, and, and uh, the city has been very slow uh, on pushing with, with urban agriculture. And so, um, as with all movements, uh, very rarely the government goes ahead and says, you know, let's do this fun project. Usually it's citizens that wake up and say, we want to start doing this. It's very important. And so, um, it's what we decided to, to, to do, is to, to uh, uh, get citizens involved in starting to, to produce their own eggs uh, so that eventually the city starts seeing this as a, as a, as a sustainable activity and starts uh, making regulations that make sense for this in the city. Okay, explain to us how it works. Uh, uh, $1,149 for a kit. Yeah, which is basically a, a modern chicken coop. So, so uh, a chicken coop that's been designed for the urban backyard, uh, and it comes with uh, two hens and everything you need basically to, to start up. So we come and set up the coop, deliver the the hens, they give you all the food, all the litter, everything you need for the first season. Uh, and the idea is that you uh, 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 get going with with professionals so that you can do this properly uh, on your first year. What's a modern chicken coop look like? It's very very nice. <laughs> <Is it> nice? <laughs> I mean, the regular chicken coop is just usually uh, a couple couple pieces of plywood that have been set up together and so so this one's a very uh, very aesthetic has a uh, some metal size sidings on it uh, it's all made of cedar it's a very beautiful chicken coop um, it's also very small so it's a bit of a smaller setup so that you don't need something that makes takes a lot of space in your backyard how big is it uh, it's about four feet by four feet and three feet high so you get a coop you get two hens right uh, you get uh, the, the, the food that they eat as well the whole food the, whole the litter food. everything you need so so you don't have to spend a dollar over that. Um, what will hens do for you with with all of that? Hens give you a few things. Uh, they give you obviously eggs, so they give you two eggs a day. Well, there's two hens, so they each give you each a, give an egg a day. Exactly. So, uh, you know, eight to fourteen eggs a week is what you get with, with two hens. Um, and that's why we call it POC is production, observation, connection. Is that there's a uh, for us a large side on education is that we we're aiming this mostly for families, and so we think um, as kids can see how how food is produced. So in this case, eggs, but it could be uh, for honey or for just regular vegetables. Um, there's a sort of education that happens. On understanding where food comes from, uh, how food is produced, and why it's important to understand that. Uh, and so uh, that's really what comes out of it, is not just the food production, not just the eggs, but also that connection with the environment and nature and production of food. How, how easy is it to take care of the, ten, the two hens? It's really easy. It takes about 10 minutes a day. It's just really to pick up the eggs uh, and then clean up the, the, the coop every uh, every week for about 15 minutes. Uh, and do they work in, can, like for instance, you have a dog or a cat, how is that going to work out? Oh, it's okay. The, the chicken coop's been designed for uh, uh, for predators, so so uh, no, not only cats and dogs, but anything that lives in the city. Well, uh, there are a lot of raccoons in some parts of Montreal, and foxes <laughs> even you can see every once in a while, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why we uh, we designed the, the the chicken coop with a firm in Montreal that's uh, uh, industrial designers, and they had very specific uh, um, realities to to build into this design, and so uh, it's very protected to, to so that the hens feel safe. They need to feel safe when they're they're producing eggs, uh, so it's a very safe uh, chicken coop. How much much noise do they make? They don't make very much noise. Uh, there's a two uh, misconceptions about uh, about chickens in the city. Is uh, one they make too much sound, and two it they smell. Uh, if you don't have a rooster, there's no there's no sound. There's a bit of pecking once they when they're laying, but it's in, uh, nothing even close to a dog bar a dog barking. Uh, and they don't smell if you clean them. So those are two myths that we're trying to break through with, with this. Too. How much space would you need to ha to successfully have a coop? Uh, about six feet by six feet. 
It's not very big. Not very big. Um, and what happens if, if things go wrong? For instance, the chicken gets sick, uh, there's some sort of problem with the chicken coop or whatever. It's the main thing that Pac's trying to bring. So, so a lot of people in the city are already doing chicken coops, but we're trying to bring, uh, some sort of guarantee on people that might be a little afraid in starting. So we have a full guarantee that we call an absolute guarantee. Uh, so within six months of getting your chicken coops, if, there, if ever there's a problem with the hens, uh, if ever there's a problem with a neighbor or a complaint or, or, or a city sends you a, a, a bill or something like that, we're going to be covering everything. We'll be reimbursing uh, fully people that don't uh, want to continue for any reason, uh, and we'll be uh, exchanging hands if ever they get sick too. What, what about winter? Like today, it's minus 25 in some parts of the greater Montreal area. Oh, chickens are very good in the winter too. Yeah, they find uh, even that cold? Uh, well, you need to add this kit that, that has basically a little uh, warming light inside the inside the coop that keeps them warm. Uh, but no, they're very, uh, they're, they're okay. They can walk in the snow and uh, not an issue. We asked the City of Montreal what they thought of your program. Executive Committee member in charge of sustainable development and the environment is Real Menard, also the mayor of Hachelaga Maisonneuve, not available to speak this morning. The city sent us a statement saying it is not legal, or at least not strictly speaking, but there are exceptions in Homa, in Rosemont Petit Patrie, and in Ville Marie. So, what is the legal framework exactly? Do you understand it? Yeah, um, a lot of municipalities don't allow it right now, and we understand that fully, and that's actually the number one reason we started PAC, uh, is that we need a movement happening in the city towards urban agriculture. Uh, there, there's a big problem in, in, in uh, production of food in the world. It's a, the number one killer of the environment is agriculture, uh, through pesticide use and monocultures and, and all these different things that are, that are attacking the environment. But there uh, are people who have chickens now, hens. I, I have some friends who live uh, in uh, Rosemont Petit Patrie Borough and, and their landlord has two hens. Yeah, so as long as there's no complaint from a neighbor, uh, the city won't do anything. Uh, and we've seen cities like New York and, and Chicago and, and uh, uh, Seattle start changing the regulations just in the last few years and so we're hoping the city of Montreal is going to do the same thing once we start getting a bit of a uh, of a movement happening in the city. Starting off small, can you explain the idea for starting off with what? About 30? 30, yeah. We're starting with 30 families. Uh, um, we really see Montreal as this, this new hub for urban agriculture. There's a lot of new projects happening and so uh, we want to start small, but we want to start strong. So the idea is to have a sustainable base of people that we, we trust, that we can start this project with, uh, and eventually move forward with it so that we can have a, a regulation that, that sustain these projects in the long term. So how are you picking the 30? Um, we launched our website. We just launched it actually on, on Saturday. Uh, for anyone interested, it's uh, POC.com, P-O-C. Uh, no, it's POC-POC.com. Uh, oh, dash, POC-POC.com. Exactly. Yeah, Sorry. Exactly. Um, and uh, there's all the, the information there and, and, and the photos of the coops and everything. And so uh, on there, there's actually a little counter and people are, are registering right now and it's going, uh, 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 and so we're registering people. Uh, but then we're going to be interviewing also everyone to, to make sure that we have people that, that are getting in for the right reasons. Because so they have to audition. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very exclusive chicken coop. So, but how are you going? But you are going to select them. So, what what are the criteria? Um, we're looking for people that that uh, are interested for the educational aspect. Uh, so, not just uh, production of eggs and a uh, cool thing to have, but it's people that understand that this, this is something that has a lot of value on the educational side. And, and what about where they are going to be? Uh, yeah, there's a few uh, uh, a few um, uh, requirements for space and, and having the proper backyard and, and, and parts of Montreal. Nope. No, we're going to be anywhere? doing anywhere in Montreal, anywhere in the South Shore to a North Shore. We, we're really uh, trying to cover, cover a, a fairly large uh, radius, uh, and we're we're um, we're trying to also get you know uh, um, a few different municipalities so we can start having discussions with all these different municipalities. What discussions have you had to date with the with the different political levels? Same as you had, uh, asking, can we do this? And obviously, no is they, the answer. They, right. But you know, as I said earlier, is is in all of movements that 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 really carry uh, further, you need to start getting citizens and. And you need to ask government. Government's very reactive. You know, they they won't go out and say, uh, "I think this is a good project." They they'll react to people doing it and start putting things in place. And you already have quite a few people interested. We already have about uh, a dozen people interested. Um, and we're very excited. And 30 is the number you're looking for. Yep, so 30. it's. Let me just say that again. The the name of the website poc dash poc. Dot com and we'll tweet it out from our Twitter account, which is at CBC Daybreak. Uh, and Alex McLean, you can also just search POC, POC Montreal. Alex McLean, who's co-founder of Alveol and POC, a new urban chicken coop disruptor program in Montreal. Alex, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. And uh, look forward to hearing how it all goes. Yeah. <laughs> With the traffic and public transit here.